Um, plant large to small. This is, if you get nothing else from this talk, hopefully this little um, thing here, this, this slide, <laughs> it's my best slide. Plant large to small. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, you have this vision in your head of what it's gonna be like in the future. Start with your trees first. We know somebody who's actually started putting raised beds and a lot of little things in, and then like two or three years down the line, they're thinking, wow, I probably should have put some trees in. Well now, in order to get the holes big enough and to be able to figure out where the trees are gonna go, they're gonna have to disrupt all that hard work that they've already done. So in our estimation, the first thing to get in the ground is to think through your master plan and figure out at least where your signature trees are going to be, especially your larger varieties, and figure out where they're going to be. Where they're going to be, yeah. Because then, you know, two or three years from now, and you start putting the plants around it, you know, those trees are just going to be like, yeah, I'm here. You know, they're all ready to go, and they're already moving towards production. Because trees don't necessarily produce fruit the first, second, or even third year. Pistachio trees. Pistachios, we have, yeah. We have three pistachio trees, and this is, we put them in in 2008, 2009. Yeah. This is the first year we've had a real crop. So I'm very, very grateful that we put them in way long time ago, because what if I just thought to do it now, then I would have to wait all those years before I'd get a crop. So, so here you see a picture starts. of, yes, three yes. trees in one hole. Multiple uh, trees. Multiple tree planting. One um, tree, two tree, three trees. These are apple trees, and our, we're very fortunate to have the man that started the Master Gardener program in Las Vegas, Bob Morris. And he was good enough to come to our house, and we did a little shooting and had some folks over. And he explained to us this is a technique, and he said you can do, he's done it, up to seven trees in, in one, one hole. hole. So if you have a small piece of property, a small piece of land, start thinking in terms of maximizing your space. And in, he is not a fan, and we neither are fans, of multiple grafted trees. A lot of people get into small spaces and they think, well, I want a, a, lime, a, lorn, a lime, a lemon, and an orange. I'll just get one tree with all three of those on it. And usually those trees are not necessarily successful. Usually one graft will fail, or there's, there's sometimes a lot of problems with those types of trees. So this approach, totally different approach to getting multiple varieties in one small spot. The only thing you have to do is you have to prune the trees as if they're one tree. For instance, we have three trees here, one, two, three. I'm pruning, usually you prune a tree so it has a bowl, so there's airflow through the middle. So, but I'm pruning the trees so that the bowl is like one third, one third, one third of the bowl. So I'm creating the bowl within the three trees so that airflow is going through. I wanted to mention one other thing he explained to us. And you can also, um, pay attention to the positioning. Maybe one yeah. tree is more uh, sun tolerant, so you'll put that on you know, the southwest facing side as opposed, you know, so as they grow, that guy's protecting the other two, that kind of thing, so. The other piece of advice, I see a hand back there, we'll do questions at the, at the end. Um, the other piece of advice is to use the same type of tree, like these are three apple trees. I wouldn't be putting an apple with an orange or, you know, I, you want to keep it within the same family of tree because right. they're going to have the same growing conditions. The other benefit of doing this is when this tree died. Which it did. Which it did. <laughs> we didn't have to wait another year to put in another tree in this spot. We already had two trees in that spot. Plus what it does is it, you know, th we're, this is Las Vegas and we're from LA, so it's a big experiment, it is. Uh, you know, experimental thing for us. You, we also found out, okay, so those are the, those kind that of That variety doesn't it. work. But we know that these two varieties do work. So now we prune those as a double-sided bowl from here forth. Um, okay, and then the other thing that I'm doing is ornament, I'm doing a combination of ornamental pruning and production pruning. That is a whole nother talk that's really not our specialty, but we have learned that there's ways to prune your trees. They have to be at this 45 degree angle in order for the hormones of the tree to tell it to like, oh, this is the fruiting, this is the fruiting stance. The fruiting, very <laughs> the nice fruiting, fruiting stance. stance. Beautiful. And if the branch is down here, it's because that's not, that doesn't look very fruitful. And the trees actually know that when they're pruned a certain way or they're sitting a certain way, they're going to produce food. So we're doing a little bit of combo of making sure that we have some branches that are like that. But I'm also pruning for beauty because I, I like the way sometimes trees do grow this way or that way. So we're doing a combination of that. The other thing you, you can do, espalier pruning, if you're in a small space, 
Es, um, espalier, um, do I need, I probably need, I don't explain it to you anyway. Espalier is a French um, planting technique where they take a tree or, uh, and they wire the branches, they clip them so that they're wired. You've probably seen them in like, they, they go horizontal lines and then the fruit falls off of these horizontal, horizontal lines connected to wires. It's very intense work. You have to be a master or grower to be able to do that kind of thing. So I'm lazy. And he doesn't want to be putting wires up all over the place. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a modified version of that. I'm kind of taking that idea where I just prune the trees flat. So whereas I have a very shallow area between the house and the next door neighbor's yard, and I can plant a fruit tree two feet from that fence and trim off all of its back branches and in, trim off all its front branches so I can walk by it. And I can create a tree that's just, you know, it's going to grow this way and this way, but not forward and back. And I just continually encourage that kind of growth behavior in the tree. And that's how you can get more and more plants in your yard where you think you couldn't do it before. Plus, it's uh, when it's harvest season, you literally just walk up to it and you're like, pick fruit, pick fruit, pick yeah. fruit, instead of reaching way in, that kind of thing. Other thing we do too is sometimes I'm really lazy and I don't feel like doing that pruning. We do, we, you know, life is busy. We let a lot of it just kind of go wild as, as it wants to grow because that's kind of a nice thing to do to your trees too. If it's in a spot where you can let it grow wild, Absolutely, just, yeah. you know, don't sweat it. You know, don't sweat that you have to keep every single piece of your property or your land really pristine and properly kept. There's a lot of beauty and just letting your yard or an area just go wild. You and want to talk about companion plants? Oh yeah, and the last thing that we're doing, we've been doing this the last couple of years, is that once we got our hardscape and, our, uh, and all the irrigation, everything in place, now we're learning about companion plants and plant guilds, and that's when you have certain plants that are friendly with other plants. So like we're putting uh, borage and balms under certain trees because they attract beneficial in insects. And you can learn all about companion planting. There's a lot of great resources online about which plants go with which trees and which guys are good friends to, to live together.